are such an asshole. Good morning, children. Cappy has been busy writing and going to the gym, sir. Uh, so I might get the girl, sir. Uh. <clears throat> and while I was at the gym, sir, uh, at the girls, let me pull it up here. Pulled it up before. As a professional podcaster should, you pull up your material before you go live. Atham, our Mexican agent in the field, he sent this to me and Vlad Elkums. And it's a text exchange he had from uh, a younger friend of his, because as you know, Atham has graduated with his degree in chemical engineering. So if anyone's looking for a chemical engineer, please contact me. He's looking for a job. But he's hanging out with obviously younger people, because most of the kids go to college in their younger 20s. This guy's 23. Um, Alan went off. Bro, you found my source. Haha, this along with my friends is how I formulated my opinions on divorce. I was low key repeating quotes from this video. Haha. And, um, he, Atham had linked to him watching this video. Immediately thought of you, so he sent him this video. Atham says, No F in ways. And then the other kid says, No kidding. Dwayne sent me this. Haha. I was going to send it to all of you. And so Atham then says, he sent that screenshot to me and Chad. He says, the word is out. This dude is 23. He and most of his friends won't be getting married. And, oh, by the way, ladies, these would be your chemical engineers. We have a good man. I'm sorry. They're not all 6'2". But whereas I've talked about this before, and I'm, I did not come up with the original observation of this uh, thinking ape. Uh, a year ago, at least, he came up with the observation that uh, many young men or the men born today, they will not go through the red pill rage phase simply because the Internet has been invented and we have reconstituted all the long lost wisdom. I mean, going back to the Greeks, who knows how long ago these guys knew about the uh, ladies and male female dynamics because they won't be lied to. Now, they'll be lied to. Don't don't get me wrong. Your parents, your teachers, your guidance counselors, media, and all that, they're going to lie to you. But they don't have monopoly like they did, certainly back in my day, in the baby boomers' day. You know, just think about this. Just think think about this. You're walking along, minding your business, and a blue-colored sky. Flash! Bam! Alakazam, the baby bo boomer woman, gave you a divorce papers. Imagine being a baby boomer, right? Oh, geez, my goodness, the television is just so swell. Everything's wonderful. People are married, Andy, and my three sons. And oh, look, it's just, just a swell time. I'm going to marry my main gal, my Saturday night gal. We're going to have kids just like my parents did. <laughs> and about starting 19, what was it, 68, 69? Bam! Like an entire generation of men just got blindsided by divorce. I don't even know. I haven't looked at happiness studies of the baby boomers in marriage. But let's just assume another half of those that remained to keep it together were miserable or not happy. Think about that. It just and that they were the first ones to sustain divorce. Well, I mean it was there. Divorce existed, but it was it was shunned. It wasn't really something that was easy to get, which there's an argument that it should be, but the whole point is they they got caught with the pants down. They had no idea what was coming their way, and they just got flattened. My generation, as I said many times before, I thought they'd be a little more hip to the jive. I thought us being the latchkey kids and you know being the kids that saw it, we got a front row seat to that shit. <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. Well, apparently nobody listened. Because even though divorce went down a little bit for my generation, it's still up there. We we got a solid silver in the divorce Olympics while the boomers obviously walked away with the gold. <clears throat> but I do remember, and it doesn't matter, boomer, X, or whatever, someone pre-internet talked to old man Rolo. You know, he was there 3,000 years ago. Talk to anybody. We had no clue. We had no clue what was going on. And I, I guarantee you, we thought it was geographic. There's something wrong with the girls in our, I Mark my word, you go talk to any guy over, I don't know, <clears throat> 45, where he or, I guess girls would have the same thing. They had their girl magazines, though. Talk to any guy 40 or older. 
and say, okay, the girls were a little screwy, right? Why did you think they were, what was off? Where did, what was your theories as to why you thought it was off? They say, it was something in our school district, something in our town. You know, there's something in the water. It could, it, that's what we thought. There's something about this. I'm doing everything I was told to do. It must be. Then you go to the next town over, whether you move for school or you went to college. Like, what? It's the same thing. What the hell's going on? And we had to figure out, not, not complain. We had to walk uphill in snow both ways with tornadoes and scratching cats. Uh, we had to figure it out analog. <laughs> which which is cool if you go back to the you know the the 2000s where there's just discussion boards the 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 so suave or what was it the the game there was the uh was there a book out called the game i forgot but the, these old school foundational the book of pook which jack napier has you got to look like wow this is some like 101 stuff and now, 20 years later, we have an established canon of work that even though the young kids of today are lied to, the same exact lies that your same exact moms, except a couple more of them are single than they were in times past, the same teachers, same for everybody and the girls themselves, they tell you the same lies, but you don't fall for it because you look it up now. You Google it. And I got to... Pat ourselves on the back a little bit. We did a pretty darn good job of organizing it, getting the main principles of attendance down, popularizing it with the uh, Kevin Samuels. May he rest in peace. It's certainly fresh and fit and all the other gang out there. Not a single man is going to be anywhere near as confused, let alone for decades. Do you know? Imagine this. Imagine this. Imagine you were born in 1955, you turned 20 in 1970. You, you, you turned puberty in the late 60s. Come on, baby, light my fire. In your in the 70s, where if you don't go look up the fashion in the 70s, it wasn't good. I you you could live, and then you're married, and then you don't know, and you are, and then you're boomery by that time. I'm going to listen. I'm not listening to those dang dabbit kids on the internet. Not listening to that Ryan Stone kid. He's Canadian. Get married, and you don't, and it, you, that's your entire life. You never knew. And certainly too late because you're old. And, you know, look at you know, the sun setting on your life. Can you imagine how pissed off you'd be? And that's where the red pill rage came from because you were lied to and you made decisions, huge, life-changing, costly, almost sometimes all-consuming if you factor in divorce and marriage and you lost your family. I have Terrence Pop. Go talk to him. <clears throat> You're damn right you'd be pissed. But thinking, hey, people point out these kids aren't getting pissed off no more because they got the red pill. Conveniently organized, served in many different ways, however you want. Do you want audio? Do you want it? You could, you could search on the YouTube to get your answer just like that. Just like you could figure out how to uh, replace a water pump on your car because that wisdom was not passed down to any generations today. You could go and figure out why did she stand me up? Why did she flake? And of the many things, I'm going to get to like how it's a victory, but you know, if for the, if there's, if there's, of the many victories, one I like the most is you guys, you you boys, no, it ain't your fault. That I think was one of the most that that almost drove me mad. So people, it does. Oh, I wonder where the school shooter not school shooters. Uh, I wonder where the insult shooters come from. I'm like, I don't know. Were you lying to them the entire time? Just me. But where you try this, you try that, you do this, you do that. And you kept thinking there was something wrong with you. It's like, no, no, this is a fact. This is a fact. And this is going to be a surprise to any young man who's on the internet now knows the red pill, blue pill in the matrix sense. It's a lie. You've been lied to. Society is wrong. You are right. You are not insane. You know, this is assuming you're doing your work and you're lifting weights and you're becoming, you know, like a chemical engineering major graduating. You're like, no, it's not me. You avoid decades of confusion and mental pain decades do you know how much better our lives would be 
us old timers, if we weren't confused for decades, we just had a book. <laughs> here, <clears throat> I got it right here. I, I, he doesn't pay me. If you want to, I'm not joking. Get this book. This guy's my age. He came out with this book. The first two thirds of the book is confusion. The land of losers. He gets, and he gets, he goes into a dark place. I, I mean, you you really, just to, just to see what happened in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. And then he, now he goes overseas to Asia where he is more culturally fit. He's a nerd, intelligent, very intelligent man. Uh, I won't go into the details, but he just went to a culture where they're mature and responsible. They show up on time. I'm not even necessarily talking to gals. But you want to see the pain and the misery and the agony that your average Xer, perhaps baby boomer, went through? Get that book. Now you don't. Now you're just like, oh, now there's not. It's not like there's a ton of gals that are night. I mean, yeah, I look at obesity rates, all the girls that are tattooed. I look at younger gals for your generation. Yeah, that sucks. But there's no confusion. And you boys know she's wrong. I'm right. The girl who's trying to convince all of society that big is beautiful and that she don't need no and that her tattoos on her face make her pretty. No, no. She's delusional. She's the one who's wrong, literally wrong, not morally or ethically wrong, although one can make an argument if you're for socialism. You're like, yeah. <clears throat> I'm right. She's wrong. I'm the one with the real degree. I'm the one with the trade. I'm the truck driver. I'm saving up money for the house. I'm living at home because I'm not stupid enough to pay $1,800 a month rent to go live downtown around campus where all the action is. Wrong in the sense that 60% of college students are women and only 40% are men. There's 50% more women than men in college. Oh my, men are falling behind. No, they're so far ahead because they're not wrong. 60 of the 60% of the gals, 90% of that 60% of women may, are majoring in worthless junk that's just going to cripple them financially. And if you look at the numbers, it's still not good enough, guys. There's still the majority of you majoring in dumb crap, too. Business. Marketing, bro. STEM or go home. Or accounting or actuarial science or something with IT. It, none, it, it, that, the percentage of men in college should be down to like 15%. Because you guys are wrong there too. But men as a group are more right than gals when it comes to college. You, and it's obviously the red pill doesn't just apply to dating. It's economics and investments, finance, life philosophy. And you boys are slowly waking up. It's now there are less men going. Now imagine, let's fast forward 10 years into the future when you're now the millennial generation's age. Are you going to be like the millennials? I need a student loan bailout. <laughs> In intellectual honesty, Gen X is also begging for a bailout too. Are you going to avoid that landmine as well? Say, if I didn't major in I became a truck driver. I became a tradesman. I became, I got a poster of Alex Patino the truck giant Latino agent in the field. And I, someday I hope to grow up to be like Alex. Avoid four years of dumbass college. <clears throat> And so when Adam sent me that, I was like, wait a second. We're so focused. We're so going, going, going. But whether you're a young boy, young man, drilling at college, getting your trade, adventuring, maybe going out having fun, right? Uh, content creators, philosophers, whatever you want to call us on the internet. Like, look at this going on. I got to analyze, analyze this, stay on top of current events, how it's evolving in the, how the arms race, the, in the sex war is changing. But then sometimes you got to stop and come off the line. Sometimes you got to stop and look, there's a Canyon called Spearfish Canyon out here in South Dakota. I've climbed up the, one of the most, Prominence is the highest distance in terms of height, not necessarily altitude. I climbed up this side of the canyon because I wanted to, and it was steep. And I, I mean, you're just going up, and you all you do is you're just looking up. And I kept seeing the top, and then I'll there's always a fake top because then as it curves, like oh, it keeps going up. There's, a, there's a, another top. I knew that was going to happen. I'm like, how oh, darn it! I'm thinking about that, and then I 
I think I'm like, okay, I don't need to get up that, you know, I've proven myself. And then I look behind me and I had already cleared the, the cliff on the other side of the Canyon. So I could see into Montana, Wyoming and, and Western South Dakota. And it was an amazing view. And then you look down like, holy cow, did I come up far? I'm like 90% there. And I don't think we've ever stopped to say, okay, look at how much progress we made. And not just progress, but we've we've captured some objectives. And one of the main objectives I think we've captured is that we have completely undermined and eliminated. I don't want to necessarily say feminism's control because it indicates that it was conscious and not naturally evolving. But I'm going to use it for, for lack of a better word. But the left feminists, normally conforming, inferior thinking, the cultural zeitgeist, whatever you want to call it. We have now destroyed their monopoly on that information. Young men are never confused again. Young men will never be confused again. The the wall, the united front that we got told when we were younger is girls are equal and by God, and they you still open up the doors about only when they want you to, but you better figure out when that is, but we're not gonna tell you. That men are a prey, and then just in the boardrooms of corporate America, there's just a bunch of um, not mass, uh, uh, misogynist uh, <clears throat> spanking women in the ass. That every day men are like, you know, oh, we're really bad people, and then they even got they try to get it to the thing like, well, you should give up your your even though you're the best qualified person, you really ought to give it up and and let other people be bigoted against you. Because it's affirmative action, and that's fair. And I don't know how many. Well, okay, I'll be an ally. <laughs> they provided the and oh no, you must have done something wrong. Oh, maybe you're just fishing in the wrong hole. Oh, you've done. You must have done something. Well, yeah, not anymore. That monopoly on the what would I call it, the, that monopoly, not just on the information, but the context in which we were having a discussion nationwide, society, globally wide about the sexes and all that. They no longer control that. They don't, they don't lay the premises. They don't get to get in there early. They'll try. They still will with the public schools. They will, <clears throat> they will. But I've said a million times before, the red pill will never die. Oh, my God, the man who is over there. No, it ain't because the male sex drive ain't all, and it never will be. Half the damn questions are still, how do I get the girls? Well, welcome to the red pill, sir. It, it, they'll, I don't care what their teachers tell them or the professors for the longest time. Men are going to want to get laid, and then they're going to come in like, oh, my God. So I don't know until you eliminate the male sex drive. Although I guess a lot of them are trying to do that. You're trying to get that testosterone down. Finally, they left us alone. We could be left in peace. Where have all the good masculine men gone? <laughs> <clears throat> but they don't have control of that anymore. You are coming out of high school at 18 like, oh my goodness. We have to da -da -da -da. Smack. You're much more aware. You're much more street smart. You're not confused. And now you got 23-year-old kids like, nope, I got a list. I even wrote it down, but I'll, I'll pull it up anyway. But people I know. So, <clears throat> you know, I've, I've said this before. Uh, Jack Napier. I envy Jack. He, 32 now, I think he is. He's never gone through. He's online. He's working himself. He don't got no kids. He's not got no wife. He's not confused. He gets a good night's rest. He's in shape. He's got his hustle. If you're looking for someone to do some voice work, may I recommend Jack Napier? He's got his online workout regimen that you, if you wanted online training and you know, I, I, more like, uh, I mean, he's not there in the gym with you, obviously, but he'll tell you what to do so you can look like him. And I hate to compliment Jack. He's in great shape. You know, he is a bodybuilder. Uh, there's this kid I know who hikes. Uh, in Vegas, he is 20. He may not even be 26. He went to the military. He 
got the GI Bill. He got a job out of the military, making 70, 80 grand a year. He saved his money. He bought a house for cash. Not a big fancy house. He's on the middle of nowhere. He loves it. And I'm like, this kid at 25, all you old timers that are my age, could you imagine being half your age and knowing to buy a house and not get worked about women? And he was like, no, no, I don't need women in my house. No, no, I don't, I don't need that. Nope. <laughs> He's got it. He's got a thing for the mills, but who doesn't? But he's not delusional about it. He's no, no. I'm gonna go home. We keep making fun of him. I'll, I'll say like, you need a large black woman with six guys' kids to live with you. I think you need to take care of her. You should take one of those gals and all of her children. No, 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 no. That's all right. No. There's a tornado chasing kid who chases tornadoes instead of going to college. Did Uber Eats and in a Sprinter van as he chased tornadoes. Became a truck driver. 22, I think. No, no. And I'm like, look at this. We got a whole generation. Oh, <clears throat> and then the passport bros, which isn't necessarily age. Obviously, that's uh, that's for the brothers out there. But again, not, not strictly relegated. This was a disproportionate percentage. That's what we call them, passport bros. I, 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 now I'll just be perfectly blunt i don't think there's a group out there that treats their men quote unquote worse than black women i'm just sorry girls are there black women that treat men nice yes i, I know some uh but the oh you just sold them for some government checks and there's also a vitriolic hatred i think some like geez what the hell do these guys do to you <clears throat> don't don't blame bob for what pookie and ray ray did to you and by the way you let them do it to you and the brother's like, I, I'm at it, I'm out of here. I'm going, whatever, Dominican Republic, Colombia. And then these gals have the gall to get pissed off when you leave. I'm sorry, they're your slaves? Did you think they were your slaves, that they were just going to sit here and tolerate that? They are like, nope, we're out of here. We're not doing this. And then, obviously, other people within the United States, not of the black community, are like, yeah, we've been doing that. What are you talking about? <laughs> We came to Vietnam for a war. We stayed here. What are you, <laughs> some old wise vet <laughs> sitting in Laos? Or not Laos, Thailand. <clears throat> and this is more of a victory than you think because if they don't control the media and the property, they don't control your thoughts, they don't have you programmed, they don't put their operating system in your brain, you're not the ones running around like, okay, dear, like, and you can see it, and you can see it. You know where you see it? You see it in the marriage rate. There are no men getting married anymore. Now, admittedly, women also don't want to get married unless it's to this little top, 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 tippity, top, 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 tippity, top, tippity, top, 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 tippity, top percent. But the guys are out. So much so, they're they're starting, you know, the, the, the Vince LaRosa not getting married. You're not living here. We're not having children. Uh, all like nope, guy. The twenty-three year old, the twenty-three year olds, the nerds, the nerds, the one like they can figure out quantum physics, but they can't figure out girls. The nerds like nah, there's nothing to figure out there. And going forward, at at minimum, you're not going to be confused. Most of them, you're going to redeploy your time and reinvest it into things like. Hiking, getting a house, um, advancing yourself in electric travel, going overseas and getting years. <clears throat> Whatever, you're going to have an easier, better life because you're simply not confused. And the whole thing where you, you got to imagine this. Imagine these guys that are allies. I don't mean to be so simplistic about, but imagine being a male Democrat. I'm not saying y'all got to become Republicans. Preferably become libertarians. You get you you get you get wise. But imagine being a, a male Democrat, regardless of the age. You still believe this bullshit? Uh, we gotta okay. Let's go get some organic coffee, dear. I ain't even married. Oh, you want an open relationship? Or oh, let's just raise our children in the bubble. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what? 
Really? There's in the Bible, it's called the quick and the dead. There's there's the conscious and the brainwashed, there's the sentient and the NPCs. Yeah, there's simps. Yeah, there's still simps out there. But look at it. I'm not saying, okay, now we all vote Republican or anything like that, but you guys are not going to be led with your dicks anymore. And if you're not going to be led with your dicks anymore, that means girls don't have that much power over you anymore. And I don't think, I honestly don't think women mind that much. I don't think we, feminists are like being, oh, drat, those those rotten men are are escaping the plantation with their own independent thought. They may not like what's being said on the red pill, and, and that's fine. But I think feminists are, and women in general, are kind of okay. It's like, oh, fine, those boys are leaving us alone. And then later on, okay, what a man. But that's because they're only going up to a small percent, which we're not going to go over those dynamics again. But I think everyone's like, okay, like, yeah. I think we've had a national conversation where find out we don't like each other that much. The the rank and file. Fives don't like fives, sevens don't like sevens. Girls are only going to go up for this top, top, top percentage of men. What the hell is that? Oh, that's a truck downshifting. Oh my God, how close is he? <clears throat> And so I think uh, they just want to be left alone by by and large. At least that's what they say. <laughs> oh, what lurks in the hearts of it. I keep getting reports from female friends like, oh, yeah, my female friends are miserable. Don't care. Don't care. Not my problem. Oh, no, the females are miserable. They're they're lying and, and uh, living contradictory lives. I have had a couple of like, no, this girl goes out parties, complains she can't find a guy, even though she dresses up. And this is a while ago is when nightclubs are still barely a thing. Cute little girl and uh, comes back and drinks wine and cries herself to sleep. Oh, teacher, by the way. No, therapist, counselor at the public schools. Hey, those public schools, they know everything. You know what? Don't care. Men, men, let me, let me tell you how quickly we've escaped the plantation, how we escaped the event horizon. Normally, like, oh, how do I get the girls? The girls really want us, and deep down inside, they're crying themselves at night, but please come back. No, we don't care. No. <laughs> You're, you are adults. You're equals. You keep saying. You want to be treated as men. Yeah, don't care, dude. Get off your ass, and you either tell you people what you want, live the life you want. You either do it or you don't. But right now, oh, you got your bitch shields up? Guess what reality is? Bitch shields. You tell them, we don't need no. <laughs> oh, is that what you told us in the real? Okay, I guess that's the real world. Bye. Oh, but some of them might be crying at. <laughs> Dude, we got stuff. That... We got to build those microwave ovens, custom kitchens, refrigerators. That's what we. Do we chase the girls? No. Microwave ovens, custom kitchens, refrigerators. Should be like the, the call sign for life. Well, you know, I'm too busy installing microwave ovens, custom kitchens, refrigerators. We got to move refrigerators <clears throat> and the color TVs. Don't forget about the color TVs, guys. We got stuff to do. And I hate, I hate to see what I become in one regard where... I've ran, we ran into these gals back in the 80s and 90s. I remember dating this gal. Her mom was a rabid feminist. Like, we don't need you. Da, 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 da. And it's it's like, but you're forced to be like, yeah, we don't need you either. We're not the ones that started this. But now when we say it, it isn't like, like a power trip or anything like that. It's like, no, we got the wisdom now. We got the knowledge. It's out there. We don't need you. Goodbye. We'll be here. If at any point in time you want to voluntaristically court date, we'll come to the table. If you want to enter, so it's going to be okay. All right, here we, go. here we go. Hang on, grab your coffee. If you would like to incentivize us to engage in a relationship with you by going to the extent to consider what we would like and delivering that, bringing that to the table, we're interested. But we know that's not. We're, it's it's the boyfriend's store. It's the husband's store. You go to the store. You buy a thing. Ooh, this one is the 6'2", and da da da, and votes Democrat yet has a billion dollars that he self-made. Okay, I'll take this one. Let us know how that's going, ladies. 
if you wish to come here and acknowledge that everyone is a human, people are sentient, we have our incentives and, and motivations, and you're like, well, that, that human being needs to have these certain things. So I'll offer that because I, I understand and I, I will have these requirements of that. And we'll have, you know, we can get back together. But in the meantime, this look at these cattle out here thinking they owe me. <laughs> Yeah, well, the cattle are going overseas, or the cattle are playing home, and the cattle are going to get degrees in chemical engineering. And why aren't the cattle gonna find out that? Because you're looking for cattle. You're looking for a slave. That's what you're looking for. And they're kind of like, see ya. And I think this is more of a. I know we don't believe in the pendulum swinging back, but it's definitely. Uh, We've, we've gone over the hill. We've reached the summit. And now the easy part of going downhill. I think more than one, because what aside from c controlling minds and the operating systems and the philosophy and controlling the discussion and the context of the discussion and the information, once you lose that, you can't get these people back. These boys are not coming back. You know, if you would like to have relationships with men, you're gonna have to consider it. And they're not they're not falling for the like oh dinner dates and all that. That's not that's not happening. Again, like I said before, I think people are okay going to the respective corners at this point in time. <clears throat> but this is pretty huge. It's not like we captured Berlin, but we definitely turned it back at Moscow. And we're we're uh we're I think we, I'd say for the nerds, uh, Siglo Heights. I think we've conquered Siglo Heights, and now there's Berlin, we're closer to Berlin than you realize. The issue is, do we even want to conquer Berlin? And so, I don't know what would be an added victory. I, I don't think most men here like, let's get them back and put it back in the 1940s with our and barefoot abuse and take barefoot and pregnant now. Just you wait. I just think guys are just exhausted. Like, F, no, man. <laughs> take it more of a boot. It's like, no, nah, do you do you. Have fun. We're out of here. We are so out of here. And guys are going to get on with their life. And I think a new dynamic will form where it's kind of like, oh, do you really? Oh, you'd like that, huh? That's very nice. I'm sorry, you're fat. And for that reason, I'm out. Aaron, are you predicting women are going to get thin again? But but we would, we'll just, and stuff like, why are they all tatted up? We'll just be like, yeah, that's what they do. All right. I'm booking my flight to wherever, Japan. All right, let's go to the Super Chats if we have any and have ourselves a treat. Nonstop, Dre, two bucks. Young men are avoiding the landmine of marriage. Yep, yep. Dre, we still wait on them pictures from the Middle East, man. Nonstop, Dre, two bucks. Woman, why aren't guys asking girls out anymore? I, here, here's what the stage we are. We don't care. That's not the answer. It's like, we don't care about the question. Why not? I don't know. I don't care. I got, there's things to do today. Microwave ovens, custom kitchens, refrigerators, nonstop trade two bucks. Do you plan on doing a show with the thinking ape? No, not really. Um, <clears throat> he, do, I don't think he does shows. I do tune into him because he's the most um, literal and direct. He, he very precisely scripts his, his um, videos, but he means what he says and he writes it down. He doesn't spare a word. He, he or I'm sorry. He doesn't use an, a word in excess. So he's very clear what it is and he is thinking um uh, yeah and i'm i'm going to be probably doing less videos or not videos here but I, i'm interviews are just a pain in the ass they're just a pain in the ass and i just don't have the time maybe down the road thomas landrum one of our accounting agents in the field to piss off chad and since i haven't said thank you in a while <laughs> Tom, you don't have to say thank you all the time man just go make some money and enjoy life that's it just don't don't get married don't get divorced <clears throat> fall in love have kids if you like but you know just just go live your life don't do better than what we did be be less confused than we were um and for for the love of god here's here's the only request i have of younger generations of men though with the internet i don't know if this is if we have to worry about this do not lose this wisdom again all right. Do not be like the baby boomers. Do not be like wherever we lost this wisdom about women. Please do not lose this ever again. All right. It it was painful enough to recapture it, reconstitute it, and put it back out there. 
I guess the other thing is don't be don't be ashamed. Like, oh my God, they'll call me a, a misogynist. Oh, well, they're gonna call you no matter what. Doesn't matter. Just make sure future generations of men are never confused about it again. And now that now that we know, now that we know the rules and the, the lay of the land, ladies, you may you may play at it. You can your move. It, here, okay, <clears throat> perhaps this is where we've made some great progress. We have literally put the ball in women's court and like, let us know when you're ready to play. In the meantime, we're done. Oh, how do I get to get to throw the ball back? Ooh, pins and needles. How can I, ooh, do I do it this way? Do I do it my handcuffs? Do I coif my hair? What product do I put in? We're done. Our lives are too valuable. We're human beings. We got, we got shit to do. Microwave ovens, custom kitchens, deliveries. And if you're ref, fine. But here are the rules. Here are the requirements. Otherwise, get the fuck out of here. We got shit to do. Don't make us piss away our lives anymore. That's where we're at. If you keep it that men have the self-respect to respect their own lives and not piss it away anymore, boom. By the way, link below, the book of numbers analyzing the ROI and the pursuit of women. Every young man or any man, please go get that book and read it so you know just, I'm not talking jokes here about just how much you piss away your life chasing girls. Mentally, psychologically, emotionally, but financially and chronologically, the time, the time, which is all you got. Guys, please go get that book. <clears throat> Alex Patino, truck driving Latino agent in the field, 10 bucks. The reason young men are waking up is because they're finally realizing there are no scholarships for them. And they still, if, and if they have parents still paying back student loans is still poor. <laughs> the, the evidence, the empirical data starts to build up now, the old, the further we go down. Right. Cause yeah, it's my generation that that's got kids entering college now and they got student loan debt. So they were poor, still about the same amount. Of, I know you're right. Like I, the reason I never wanted to have kids, the original one's like, if there were less, if I had less siblings, I'd get all the Christmas gifts. <laughs> You're right. They're looking at like, I'm not doing this. I got to imagine some of the uh, Zoomers are looking at, they have like millennial siblings and they're looking like, I'm not doing that bullshit. Uh, Atha Mildecchio, two bucks. Life ain't perfect, but it's pretty good. Mexican poops and the raccoons. It as long as you here's sanity is the future of wealth, man. I don't need a lot of money. I just need to know that I'm not insane. And knowing that you're not insane. Does it suck that girls don't want to have anything to do with men this generation? A couple past. Yeah, it sucks. Does it suck? We got to all go pay extra taxes. So girls could feel they're popular because they voted to take other people's money to pay for other people's bad mistakes. Yeah, it sucks. But it is nice knowing like, yeah, no, I'm not wrong. And you're crazy. And you're miserable. Because you're a girl boss. You got your MBA and $73,000 of debt. You don't need no. Why are they on antidepressants? <clears throat> uh... Generation Apollo, 10 generous stars. The CEO who said millennials can't afford houses because of Starbucks and avocado toast said unemployment, economic suffering needs to go up to remind workers that employers are in charge. Oh, did he? Which, wait, which CEO? The CEO of what company? I, I agree a little bit and then I vehemently disagree on other aspects of what they said. Um, yes, economic suffering do, does need to go up so people get off their ass and get jobs. But I don't think, empl look, employers don't need to become more dickheadish. They don't be, need to become more mean and cruel. All, right? All you got to do is remove welfare. And then, then people will be like, oh, I need to get a job. But I'm, I'm not, oh, yeah, corporate America, yay. No, those assholes want you. You got to have a college degree and you need, to, you need to come into the work. You need to come into the office. No, you can't commute. We hate you. So I'm, it sounds like a power trip and see. He's not wrong. Avocado and toast and Starbucks. Yeah, that, those are luxuries. Alex Patino, truck driver, Latino agent in the field, five bucks. Cappy, we never had the wisdom to understand Huaman. The difference was that our grandfathers didn't give a flying pea hawk about it. Nirvana at home. So, yeah, you're you're kind of in between <clears throat> the boomer grandfathers or the World War II grandfathers. I don't know because my my grandfathers were World War II, one Pacific, one European. No jokes. 
Um, yeah, it, it was lost. It was lost somewhere, say, post-50s. Can we just agree that? Like the, the World War II generation did not pass it on. They did not pass it on. All right, so link below. The Book of Numbers, Analyzing the ROI and the Pursuit of Women. Um, of course, for those of you, your dad didn't tell you about women. Your dad didn't tell you about anything. Although I think the information is getting out there. I got a course called The Dad You Never Had that's available and teachable. If you're still confused about girls or career or finance or whatever else, go take that course. It's 12 hours. It's dad in a bottle. Digital dad. Uh, it'll help you definitely earn back the $150 I charge for it. And then while we're at it, I guess they'll so go get the, the essay. It's not even a full book. The essay, um, sanity is the future of wealth. It's, it's not the money guys. It's not the money. You're going to have such a higher standard of living and a better and more enjoyable life, not being confused. And if you, if you learn not to be confused and like where everyone else is wrong, you're going to be like, oh man, this is, it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. All right, that's it. I'll see you guys later. Toodles.